patient comes to you, you examine their posture, check their range of motion, look at their x-rays, because you have a sense that after you adjust them, the adjustment just won't hold. As soon as they get off your table and leave your office, their body's busy undoing your adjustment. You need to fix it fast. Fascial alignment stretch technique fixes fascia. Bones are held out of place by soft tissue. If a muscle is chronically short, it'll pull the vertebra out of alignment. You need to lengthen the fascia in order for the adjustment to hold in place. Fascial alignment stretch technique targets the fascia. It treats the underlying cause for chronic subluxations. The immediate benefit is your adjustment will hold longer. And your patients will have some very impressive long-term benefits as well. Their flexibility and range of motion will increase. Their breathing will be much easier. Their circulation will improve. And even digestion will improve as well. And their energy may increase because they're more flexible and graceful as they walk through life pain-free. Fascia comes from the Latin meaning bands. Fascia is a sheet or band of fibrous tissue that lies deep to the skin and encloses muscles, organs, and bones. It serves to contain the body and give it form. But when the body's form becomes distorted through accident or prolonged bad posture, it can become a restrictive shell, trapping the body and inhibiting freedom of movement. By reshaping the fascia, which contains the musculoskeletal system, we can reshape the body to improve posture, increase flexibility, and restore a natural balance. Fascia responds to trauma by tightening and shortening. This can pull the body out of proper alignment. This thickening in one part of the body will cause other parts to compensate, weaving a web which prevents good posture. Physical injuries and chronic emotional states contribute to the shortening and the thickening of the fascia. This can lead to discomfort, restricted movement, osteoarthritis, and disc degeneration. And the fascia holds us in this position, often for life. The fascial alignment stretch technique seeks to loosen the fascia that binds us. The doctor or massage therapist uses fingers and knuckles to assist in stretching the fascia, slowly releasing adhesions and easing strains and sprains in the connective tissue. By releasing the tension in the fascia, we can allow chiropractic adjustments to hold in place and restore the natural postural balance to the body. In each area, we'll be checking for rotation, lateral bending, and translation. In the lower extremity, we'll check for foot flare as well as flat feet. Next, we'll check for cervical lateral flexion. The head will be slightly tilted to one side, so one ear will be lower than the other. This is where you have a low ear on the right, and place the hands under the ears, and then you can check for that. Cervical translation is indicated by a lateral ear. For these conditions, there are three anterior and three posterior stretches. In the thoracic region, we're looking for thoracic rotation, lateral flexion, and lateral translation. Work on the multifidus from L1 to L5, and you'll work inferior to superior and lateral to medial. On the lower extremity, we're looking for a lateral foot flare and flat feet. The feet may be flared inward or pigeon-toed, or flared outward or duck-footed. For foot flare, you'll want to lengthen the lateral fascia of the foot. Now we're going to do an actual check of Kim's posture. So close your eyes, nod your head up and down and march in place, march in place, and keep your eyes closed when we're finished. Okay, and stop, and now turn your head to where you feel center is, where normal is. Okay, so first we can see that the right ear is posterior to the left. It's right cervical rotation. Then we check, and the right ear is lower than the left, so that's right lateral fle cervical flexion. Now we'll be going through the fast or fascial alignment stretch technique step by step. The first thing we do is motion palpate each area of the fascia that we'll be working on. The first area is between the sternoclavicular and the acromioclavicular joints. We expect to find most of the restriction on the right because most of the postural subluxations are on the right. In order to palpate the fascia, go just below the skin and above the muscle. Now, since I'm a male doctor and Kim is a female patient, we're going to ask her to move her right breast towards the sternum. So 
So there is some restriction here. Again, we'll use the distal part of the phalanges. Breathe in and out. And we're going in a cephalad direction. The next area we'll be working on is the sternum. The sternum has a tremendous effect on the posture and how upright you are. Now I'm going to check Kim's diaphragm. And the central region here is restricted. So take a deep breath as deeply as you can. And notice how much excursion you have, how full your breath is. And you can let it out now. We'll recheck that later. So to, to check the diaphragm, you want to go about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch below the bottom of the rib cage. The psoas is usually restricted on the same side as the posterior shoulder rotation. If the third lumbar is involved, contact just below the rib cage. For the fourth lumbar, contact the psoas at the level of the umbilicus. And for the fifth lumbar, at the level of the ASIS. Since Kim has a lower back problem, and it's actually a bulging disc between L4 and L5, we're going to do some specific work on the psoas muscle here. So let's have you sit up, please. Okay. Now, we're going to find the fourth lumbar and trace around here to the front of the body. And this is the region of the psoas, just anterior to the fourth lumbar. Is it tender right there? Okay. So what I'd like you to do, Kim, is take a deep breath in and breathe out and slowly lower your right leg. And now breathe in, raise it up. And I lighten up as she raises it. And then bend over just a little bit. That's good. Breathe out and slowly lower it. And again, breathe in. And breathe out. And it just released very nicely. Good. Still tender in there? A little bit, not much. Okay, let's do it one more time. Take a deep breath in. And out. Release it a little more. One more time. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. Better? Good. OK, lie on your back now. Now I'm going to work on the rectus femoris muscle, which is just below the ASIS. Take your forearm and just turn it, rotate it like that. Pushing A to P and rotating. And feeling for a release. There it goes. Good, nice. The next area we'll be working on is the suboccipital region. Again, palpate for restrictions. It's very restricted in the center portion here. And this, for this, we'll be doing a scooping motion like this, going towards me and down. This really feels good. This is a lot of tension in there. Very good for the whiplash patients to have this done. Now I'll be working the quadratus region between the 12th rib, that's the last rib, and the iliac crest, or the top of the hip. Place your fists right in the center. In cases of flat feet, we work the lateral aspect of the lower leg between the fibula and tibia. We also work in the ankle, both the anterior and posterior aspect of it. The fascial alignment stretch technique is specifically useful for runners and athletes. An improper running style is inefficient and is usually associated with restrictions in the fascia.